His Excellency, the Governor of West Bengal, and other distinguished gentlemen sitting on the podium, as also hello to the distinguished audience that we have. You have uh, heard a lot of sense this afternoon, especially the detailed analysis into which His Excellency the Governor went. I think uh, he said some things which the authors should take note of. The governor said that he know he is not a diplomat. But we hear and read from newspapers there is so much diplomacy going on in Kolkata. <laughs> well, this signals to you that you have heard a lot of sense this afternoon. And I think you are ready for some utter nonsense. And I will provide that for you. Non-alignment two. What is the difference between the situation before the end of the Cold War and the situation now in which this document, to which this document refers? During the Cold War, there were two pacts, Warsaw Pact and NATO Warsaw, and uh, driven by India, Egypt, and Yugoslavia, there was a non-aligned movement, which sought to have an independent view of the world situation, independent of what the Soviet Union was thinking or the United States was thinking. With the fall of the Berlin Wall and uh, the demise of the Soviet Union, no blocks were left. But today, there is still a situation of contradictions between two big powers. And I am referring to the United States and China. Here, yeah. how can we be non aligned? Non-aligned between China and United States? Impossible. United States is number one. China is number two. Wants to be number two. But the Russians don't want to be number three. So we have a situation here which is somewhat why? Totally different from what it was in during the, during the Cold War years. Not, uh, the national security, of course, is to, you can widen it so much that it covers every activity of the country, and I'm not going to do that. Uh, in my mind, in a sense, the national security implies that you protect your interests abroad and prevent the abroad from interfering in your country. Of course, in the process, it will become known whether India is uh, capable of doing it are not capable of doing it. We do have problems, as uh, Mr. MP said, uh, 
northeast and other, there are very big problems. The Maoists and Nexalites, very big problems. And think that we have been we have been going through this for three decades since 1980s. Terrorism has been something to which we must be used. But we still haven't learned how to deal with it. And in some cases, more than one, external interference in the activities here is quite clear. So how do we protect our national interest by being non-aligned? According to various documents and statements, so Mr. Vajpayee started that by saying that India and the U.S. could be natural allies. And of course there have been other statements with strategic partners, I believe we have now. We talk about that because we can't be strategic allies. We don't want to be an ally. So partnership is the, is the one which he has talked about. So uh, gradually, since the end of the Cold War, there has been a shift in our policy towards the United States. It hasn't gone all the way, it will not, for reasons I will tell you. The problem is that India wants to be a good partner of the United States. The Indian public, by and large, supports that. But the problem begins because we have a less global agenda than the United States. It has an agenda everywhere in the world. And you are, you are going to have problems. You are having a problem in regard to Iran. It is right here at this moment. So, how to reconcile the global agenda of the United States with the limited world agenda of India? In 2003, President George W. Bush asked for Indian uniformed soldiers in, in Iraq. After great uh, thought, and uh, there was a debate in Parliament, I think, on that itself, we said, no, we cannot send soldiers. I, and I'm glad that is the way it, it was done, because I don't want my soldier to shoot or to be shot at without a national consensus back home. And that consensus was not there at that time. So Iraq, what is their agenda, what is our agenda? Even in Afghanistan, the Aid and assistance given by the United States since 2009-11-2001 is over 20 billion dollars. And you have F-6, F-16 and this and that, etc. At the same time, China is helping Pakistan 
with some monetary help, but a lot of other help, infrastructure, etc., etc. Now, look at it this way. China is a hostile country to us. It's doing something in Pakistan which is against us. United States is a friend of ours. And yet the impact of the policy of the United States there is the same as China's policy. Non-alignment. It's a very difficult situation today. I mean, I, I, I'm talking of non-alignment. Then in the uh, late 40s, early 50s and whatnot. I personally think that the way we should go, keep Russia on our side as we have tried to do all the time, whereas uh, sometimes the Russians have complained. And be a strategic partner of the United States in real terms. Discuss with them, this I cannot do, this I cannot do. Yes, but this I can do for you, etc., etc. Thorough discussion has, has to be done, and I'm sure the present National Security Advisor is engaged in uh, some of that. See. 